Today, as we celebrate the Assumption of Mary, our Mother, we contemplate her as the Ark of the Covenant, in whom the Son of God took flesh and was born of her as a human person. And so, through the merits of Jesus, God assumed her body and soul into heaven, thus giving all of us the hope that one day we too shall be where she is now. On a 75th year of independence, let us commend India to the care and intercession of our Queen assumed into heaven that she may dispel the gloom of the pandemic and reassure us with her motherly hand. Our entrance him, let there be glory and honor and praises. we shall be praying for all your personal intentions. The church celebrates today the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary and India's 75th Independence Day. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us first acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God together. Oh 
assume the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory. Grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened and a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was carrying and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her son, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word shall be, On your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Stands the queen in gold of Ophir. On your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. The daughters of kings are those whom you favor. On your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Listen, O daughter, pay heed and give heed. 
Forget your own people and your father's house. On your right hand stands the queen in gold of fulfillment. So will the king's desire your beauty. He is your Lord, pay homage to him. They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. On your right hand stands the queen, the Lord of A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet, but when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Mary has been taken up into heaven, the host of angels rejoices. From the Holy Gospel, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, 
and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, it's very strange that no relic of the Virgin Mary has ever been produced. No one has ever claimed to know the site of her tomb. But not entirely true. Secondary relics do exist. A girdle, a veil, and such like. One that purports to be one resides perhaps on our altar today. But no relic of her mortal remains exist. There are many legends that have grown up over the centuries concerning her death. One asserts that she was buried, but when for some reason her tomb was open, they found only her shroud and strong scented lilies. Another legend gives an account of the funeral procession when our Lord appeared and spirited her away in a cloud. Another states that she was buried and remained in the tomb for three days and was then transported into heaven. It lies with individual piety to decide, my dear brothers and sisters, which of these might be the more feasible account of Mary's demise. The Bible tells us nothing nor do other source documents of the time. This in itself is odd, as Mary was a central figure in the life of the early church, and someone surely would have noted the details of her life and death, treating her with a dignity that the mother of the Savior would have merited. But tradition has asserted for many, many centuries that in overcoming the power of death the Lord would not have wanted to see his holy mother fall prey to death and decay and placed in a grave her body was perhaps too precious for that so what is this feast all about key to our understanding of it is that we have to put it in its right perspective it's not so much about the taking of the body of Mary from this earth as about the taking of Mary into heaven. In the absence of historical record, we have to keep our minds open as to what happened when she died. But I perceive that we can be more definite about Mary being taken directly to her allotted place in the heavenly realm. A Christian believes, my dear friends, that death is not the end of everything. Christ died and rose again, and in doing so conquered forever the power of death to destroy life. Christ made it possible for us to achieve that union with the Father, which He desires for us. And as Christians, that is something for which we long. In short, the just will rise again. Our life here on earth is nothing else but a preparation for making that possible through a life of prayer, forgiveness, worship, devotion, good works, and the list goes on. And as St. Paul writes to the Christians in Corinth, words which are often used at funeral services, as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Or again, familiar words, it is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. 
It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. This we believe for ourselves. We who have sinned will one day be raised to union with the Father. We shall pass from the church militant through the church expectant and arrive at the church triumphant. If there had been nothing special about the person of Mary, then she too would have followed this pattern of human existence. But our belief, my dear brothers and sisters as Christians, is that there was something very special about Mary, something unique to the whole of humanity. She was chosen to be the mother of the Savior. She was found to be worthy and God worked in her the miracle of keeping her free from sin and kept her incorrupt. Hence we call her the Virgin Mary. Thus, from God's perspective of her life here on earth, it is unthinkable that he would desert her even in the hour of her death. She was chosen and she remains chosen. Having been kept free from sin, she takes her place immediately in the realm of heaven to be reunited with her divine son, to receive her crown of righteousness and able to offer prayer and intercession to him for those who call upon her. She has surely attained that perfect union with God that all of us desire, but so often perhaps do not deserve. And this is what our belief in the assumption proclaims. There is nothing more remarkable about believing that she has her resurrection body than believing that one day she will attain ours as well. This falls naturally into place when we see it from the heavenly perspective and stop fretting about what might have happened here on earth at the time of her death. What did happen was well within the scope of God's ability to draw all people to himself in the way that he alone chooses. This feast, my dear brothers and sisters, has a variety of names over the centuries and has been kept in the East and the West for over 1500 years. It is often referred to as the Dormition, the falling asleep of the Blessed Virgin. It has also been called Our Lady's birthday, but that only confuses it with her human birth, referring her, of course, to a heavenly birthday when she was reunited with her son. Popular piety has for centuries accepted the truth of this teaching, giving Mary that special and unique place in the life of the church. It was only in 1950 that the Pope declared this to be a dogma of the faith only really formalizing what Christians have always believed. It's a joyous feast, my dear brothers and sisters, a true fiesta, a kind of a party time, which is how it is celebrated in many continental countries. But it's also a great feast, one which has been believed in for almost the whole of the church. It is the feast which teaches us so much about the power of God and His love for all His creatures. It's a feast which prepares each one of us for heaven, giving us that glimpse, perhaps like the recent feast of the Transfiguration, of the glory that awaits each of us human beings. It's a feast about light and joy. The light that is Christ and the joy of our own coming to the place that has been prepared for each one of us. And so it is right and fitting that today we honor Our Lady as one chosen by God, not only to be the vessel through whom our salvation was born into the world, but also chose her to be close to Him forever as Queen of Heaven and Mother of the Church. Today on India's Independence Day, we thank God for the gift of our freedom and remember all those who laid down their lives in the freedom struggle. We pray that the world's largest democracy may uphold the values of democracy. We pray for our government leaders that they may work towards justice 
towards equality and towards a society where everyone will be able to live as brothers and sisters. And we ask Mary, our Blessed Mother, to intercede for our beloved country, India. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you forever remains our chant. We now profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was the God of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and upon his side, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, and God pardoned his sins of the churches. He has ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and that his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Honoring her glorious assumption, let us now seek Our Lady's help and intercession for ourselves and for our beloved nation, India. Our response is, Lord, may your mother intercede for us. All together, Lord, may your mother intercede for us. We pray for Pope Francis, the bishops, clergy and religious, that strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit, they may continue to teach and serve the people of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord may your mother intercede for us. We pray for our beloved nation, its leaders and all her citizens, as we celebrate the 75th Independence Day, that we may strive to do away with corruption and work for peace, harmony and well-being of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord may your mother intercede for us. We pray that those suffering from injustice, especially those in prison and those su suffering from structural injustice, may be meted out with due justice. We pray to the Lord. No, Lord, may your mother intercede for us. We pray for all those who have died, especially in this pandemic time that they may experience eternal life with Mary, our mother, assumed into heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord may your mother intercede for us. For the intentions, we now pray in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, may your mother intercede for us. Lord God, we thank you for preserving Mary, our mother, from all stain of sin and from bodily corruption. Grant us grace to live pure and holy lives, and thus come to be with Mary in heaven, when this our earthly pilgrimage ends. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I offer to him on this day of joy.
you, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church is coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And it never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence be the life for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us out of meditation. But but deliver, us from evil. deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the, the world, world have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An Act of Spiritual Communion O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, 
I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O divine guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Aka mene him namo ye meri ma. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing.
May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her, through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I recess in Him, you are the honor of our people. You are the honor of our people, O Virgin Mary, the joy of Israel, your best among all women, for you stretch the word in your heart. You were taken into heaven, into heaven, into heaven, into his marvelous heart. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. A very happy feast of Mary, our Blessed Mother, and a happy Independence Day to all of you. Wish you the same, Father. Father.